Good day everyone! Welcome to Mother Lourdes Learning School LMS. I am Ms. Danica Grace Calderon Calienta, your MAPE teacher. In today's video, we are going to talk about Southeast Asian fabrics and attires. But before we proceed to our new lesson, let's have a short review about our previous lesson. So last time, we discussed about music of Indonesia, which divided into two major parts, the Javanese and the Balinese music. These two divisions have their own musical identity, but are similar in some ways. One of these similarities is their instrumental ensemble, the gamelan. Gamelan is their traditional orchestra. The word gamelan came from the Javanese word gamel, which means hammer, and Balinese gambeli, which means to play musically. There are also different musical instruments of gamelan. These are the rebab, suling, gong ageng, gambang kayu, bonang barung, kenong, kendang, sarun, slimdem, and gender barung. And now, let's proceed to our new lesson about arts, which is the Southeast Asian fabrics and attires. Look at these pictures. What can you say about them? What do you think about their fabrics and attire? What color elements are very prominent in the design? If you were a designer, how would you create a Southeast Asian inspired attire based on their own artistic and cultural perception? Thai and Cambodian silk. The Thai silk is a fabricated from cocoons of Thai silk worms. This is mostly produced in Korat, the center of the silk industry in Thailand. Thai silk making is considered as one of the finest arts in the world. In Cambodia, as early as the first century, the practice of silk weaving has already been recorded. The Cambodians has used natural dyes and their Cambodian silk is usually sold domestically. They are also known for their cotton textiles. They are internationally known for importing cotton. In Cambodia, the traditional scarf known as krama is made of cotton. Krama can also be used as bandana, hammock, or a form of weaponry. Vietnam's Golden Thread Silk Most of the Vietnam's fabric originated from Hadong. For centuries, Hadong is a popular center of silk culture, silk worm production, or silk farming. Shantung Tafeta, Bengaline Wave, and ebony satin are common types of Vietnamese fabrics or golden thread silk. The gold color gives emphasis to the aesthetic value of Vietnamese silk. Batik of Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, and Singapore. Batik is a Malayan Indonesian word which means drop. The drop action refers to the process of dyeing the fabric by making use of the resist technique. The batik is a textile that has geometric and a various free-form designs which are known from generation to generation. In Indonesia, batik making has been ingrained in the Javanese culture. Nowadays, most batik designs depend on the designers. However, designs are still based on nature like elaborate designs of flowers, leaves, and birds. Poyang puppets are usually made of leather, which is then perforated and painted to create an illusion of clothing on the puppet. Used puppets were often sold to eager ladies who used the puppets as guides for their batik patterns. Did you know that Kilantan and Terengganu regions in Malaysia are considered as the first places 
where batik making flourish until it reached the shore of Singapore. The Malaysian batik is usually hand-painted or black-painted. The Malaysian batik usually incorporates leaves and flowers to avoid interpretation of human and animals' images as idolatry in accordance with their local Islamic endocrine. This makes their designs almost similar with the other Indonesians. However, the Malaysians are more into spiral lines and geometrical shapes. Their designs are larger and simpler. In Singapore, batik making was already practiced since the 12th century. To showcase their value for this historical art and culture of batik fabrics, even up to this day, batiks are used as uniforms of flight attendants for official flag carrier airlines of Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. The Brunei batik, on the other hand, is quite uniquely different from Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. The fabric highlights their national flower, Simpur, Sumbuy Sumbuy, and other traditional design called Ermule. Ermule is a Bruneian floral pattern design that symbolizes the country's gentle and courteous character. Myanmar's Aceh Fabrics in Myanmar, one popular textile design that has existed for over a hundred years is what they locally called Lon Yakyao Achek, which literally means over hundred shuttles. If the designs are meant for royalty, they may put imported luxurious fabrics like satin and velvet. Different designs are used according to the age, gender, skin color, and size of the Myanmar people. The fabric is expensive because it takes a long time to weave and the threads are pure silk. That ends our lesson for today. I hope you learned something new and I hope you enjoy our discussion. If you have any questions, you can message me anytime. Thank you for listening. Stay safe, God bless, and mabuhay.